And we're recording. Okay. Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, January 13, 2013, and this is your second update on the rocket stove build from the lab. Uh, beside me is the partially assembled J-tube burn chamber that's going to go into the, uh, into the rocket stove. And uh, I just want to briefly run through uh, how I've begun this project and uh, show you some of the steps that are involved and some of the uh, criteria that I'm using to build this particular rocket stove. So in these first couple of pictures that you're about to see, uh, this is how I took some fire brick and stacked them up to, to start piecing them together and figuring out exactly how I wanted my, my uh, build to go. The, uh, the original design that I had contemplated used a 4-inch round galvanized steel flue pipe in the center of the, uh, of the main burn chamber. And I was warned against doing that, so uh, I did accept some advice from, uh, from some of my YouTube viewers and decided to make the entire internal flue stack all fire brick. A 4-inch galvanized steel pipe has an internal cross-sectional surface area of uh, about a little over 12 and a half inches. If you look at this next photograph, you'll see that the, the opening that I have uh, completed here is three and a half inches square, which is 12 and a quarter square inches of surface area. So the cross-sectional area of the two is just about the same. The flow rate will be a little bit less in a square tube than it, than it is in a round tube, but uh, as long as all of the other dimensions are consistent, then that really should not pose any problems. One of the dimensions that just happened to work out perfectly was, if you'll notice in this picture also, I've got uh, my tape measure across the corners of the vertical uh, flue stack that's going inside the burn chamber, or inside the, inside the, the, uh, the 17 gallon drum, and it is exactly 8 inches corner to corner, and that will fit perfectly inside a round heavy gauge galvanized 8 inch uh, piece of pipe that will not only hold the uh, assembly from rocking around inside the inside the uh, the main drum but I'll also pack in some additional insulation between the gap that's created around the uh, around the sides of the fire brick going up the flue stack in the center uh, so not only does it hold it together but it also keeps it stabilized inside because at the top of the metal uh, uh, at the top of the metal flue pipe uh, I'm gonna have uh, two or three eh, probably three braces that uh, are secured to it to keep the top of the flue stack from shifting around inside the main drum. Here is a picture of the J-tube now with some of the bricks cut. Um, in this uh, little video clip that I'm about to show you, you know, you'll see that uh, I had taken my table saw outside and used a masonry bit to cut my um, to cut my bricks and if you notice all of the dust that's flying you'll understand why they invented a wet saw. Um, after I was finished cutting my brick it took me about an hour to clean off all of the dust that had accumulated inside the saw and inside the motor and uh, it, it was a mess. So if you're only going to cut you know several bricks and that's going to be the end of your project that's fine. Um, but if you're, if you're going to be doing any uh, form of lengthy project, buy yourself a wet saw, definitely. Okay, in this next photo, you'll see there is one brick that, aside from making a straight cut along the, uh, along the edge of the brick or across the end of the brick, you'll see that I also had to uh, make a dado cut in one of the bricks to get all of them to fit together the way I wanted to. I, did, I made this cut by... Uh, simply setting the height of the masonry bit above the table and just running it across up to the fence and uh, creating this quarter inch deep by one and a quarter inch wide notch at the edge of the brick and you'll see how it fits together 
in this next photo right here. Notice the brick that was uh, offset in that first picture of the J-tube now sits down flush. Uh, the, top, the top edge of this brick is now flush with the rest of the vertical bricks that start the flue stack in the center. And the, uh, the overlap just sits on top of the brick that lays across the top of the burn tunnel, the horizontal burn tunnel. The length of the horizontal burn tunnel then is the four and a half width of the, of the fire brick that lays across the top plus one additional inch of that uh, section of vertical stack. So the, uh, the actual burn chamber, the horizontal portion, is only five and a half inches. Therefore, the, uh, the, uh, the ratio of the vertical height of the flue stack inside the chamber be about four to one. Um, that should give me a very, very rockety burn inside that horizontal chamber. Here's a look inside the horizontal burn chamber. Uh, you can see that I've removed one side of the wood feed tube so that you can look inside. And this will also uh, be part of the final design where I'm able to remove the back side of it and uh, actually use it as a clean out to remove any uh, debris that accumulates. The, uh, the floor of the horizontal burn chamber is exactly three and a half inches wide and it is three and a quarter inches high. That gives you a cross-sectional surface area of 11 and 3 eighths and is approximately 7% smaller than the, than the uh, cross-sectional area of the vertical flue stack going up. So uh, I'm trying to build this rocket stove conforming to most of the known uh, criteria that seem to work best and we'll see how well it goes. In this last photo, you can see that I've taken a piece of heavy gauge sheet metal that I've salvaged and against my breaker bar, uh, against my sheet metal bending brake, uh, I um, made my first two bends and fit the bricks inside the, inside the, inside the sheet metal enclosure. And uh, what's left now is to cut the corners and fold them in, tack weld them, and get my external measurements so then I can take and cut the uh, the 17 and a half gallon Husky air compressor tank and then cut the opening for the J-tube to enter enter the tank and start welding that piece as well. The total number of bricks that I'm using in this project uh, I've calculated now based on what I've cut and uh, what I have left over uh, I ended up buying 24 fire bricks. They are standard dimension fire bricks, one and a quarter inch thick by four and a half inches wide by nine inches long. I will end up using 22 bricks to complete this project. Now, I am by no means suggesting that the way I am building my rocket stove is going to be an optimum method of building it. I'm only suggesting that this is the way I'm trying it. And if anybody wants to follow along or replicate what I'm doing, uh, I will do my best to publish accurate plans after I've actually tested it to see that it works. But this is where I'm headed, and this is how the, how the project is coming along. I hope you're enjoying watching me build the rocket stove, and I uh, can't wait to start completing the project and begin the testing. Um, it's 45 degrees outside here today, and if the weather pattern continues this way, I might not even have a chance to test it this winter before, before, before the project is done. So i got to hurry up and get this thing done. Thank you all for watching. I hope you'll subscribe. Please tell your friends about my channel. And uh, as always, peace.